What's going down? This is your man Dante of Dante Records Music Group. And today, I want to give you a studio tour of my new facility. I've been upgrading the lab for over the last two years. Before I get started and showing you the gear, hey, I even got my gear shirt on. Check it out. But I want to give a shout out to my man Junior Lee at Faith Junkie for giving me some wisdom on some gear that I'm about to show you today. He turned me on to the dangerous gear. And now I'm a dangerous man. And I'm just excited, man. I'm just excited to show you guys this new gear. So come on, let's ride. Let's get into it. Let's go. <laughs> What's going down? So we back. Welcome to my studio here. What you're looking at right now is where everything happens. It's right here. Everything happens right here. But we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna move on over to the booth. Right now in the booth, I got the Lawton Audio Atlantis uh, microphone in here. It's a large diaphragm type of mic. This mic has three voices. You can use this mic for any application. It'll do the job, anything you're trying to do. She a big boy. Takes a, a pretty sturdy mic stand to hold this thing up. So if you're gonna interested in getting the Lawton mic, make sure you get a good sturdy uh, mic stand uh, for this microphone. And of course, I just got the regular pop filter here to uh, eliminate pops and, and breaths and things like that, just to control things when the artist is in the booth. And then if you look down, I got the Sony professional headphones right here. They're the MDR 7506 headphones and I actually keep two pair in the studio. I got one pair because I'm mixing or monitoring what's going on in the booth. You take a look over here. Yeah, this is my lovely sofa. And what I like to do on this sofa is I like to do uh, long distance listening. When I'm listening to my loudspeakers, I'll take and sit back here and check a mix and see what's popping and see how it sounds through the loudspeaker system. So we go over here, we'll see my other microphones that I have. So if you look down here, I have the AKG. This is the C414. It actually has nine uh, polar patterns and turn this over it's got padding which you got negative 6 12 and 18 you got high pass on it up to 160 it actually got down to 40 Hertz 80 Hertz and 160 great mic for uh, rap artists singers again this is a very versatile mic it's very clean uh, sounding give you that modern day sound if you're looking for something that's clean but also you know, it's got some weight to it as well. Now, this mic right here, this has been with me for a long time. This here is Audio-Technica uh, 4033A. And when I first got this mic, this mic was right, right around $800. Right now you can get it for about uh, four, $500. It has a low cut on it, uh, 80, at 80 hertz, a negative 12 dB and has a pad on it negative 10 db pad great mic was the best mic for rap and everything back in the day still a good mic today so whatever mic works for the artist that i bring in here that's the mic that i use for the most part uh, if they sound good on it we use it so here we got the joe meek it's a jm37 dp and then i have uh here the shore beta green it's the, um, the BG 5.0. It's a condenser mic as well. Um, I use this mostly live uh, for live performances, but you also can use it in a studio application. And then we got the USB Audio Technica mic, which I use for my podcast and so forth. That's this mic here. Um, I use that mic when I'm doing videos and things of that nature. And so what's beneath it is the pile turntable and this is a USB turntable uh, so I use this to convert my my vinyl to digital 
and also when I want to sample stuff to do uh, some production I'll bring the vinyl in plug her in plug and play and we are in business making music great piece of equipment has a line in also um, and a couple other features with it so let's move on over to our mic preamps and see what we got cooking over there so let's take a look uh, in the studio this was my go-to preamp was the Joe Meek 1Q at one point in time basically it's, it has everything on it optical compressor has a preamp with an iron has the pad button everything that you can want in a preamp it sounds great yeah right now a new one of these you can probably get one for about about a thousand dollars roughly I just basically have it around just in case this, it, this was my go-to preamp at one point in time but I've upgraded since then and you'll see my upgrade here in just a second so beneath it I have the art voice channel another fabulous preamp uh, for less the price about half the price about six seven hundred dollars roughly right now brand new and again it has all the bells and whistles that you could ever want a preamp it's set up for digital application just like the Joe Meek is set up for digital application also and then if we go down I got the Alesis Blackface ADAT I know you're probably wondering why do I still have it well I keep it just in case somebody want to do some live uh, some stuff on tape or something like that we'll just hook her on in and use her and sometimes I even get the idea of running my digital mix back through this on tape then running it back in and since down beneath that I have a DAT machine you got the Tascam DA20 MK2 uh, still same thing just in case I love the analog gear and I just like to have it around and then below that I got just the DBX it's a patch bay for patching various sources in so that's the PB48 uh, patch bay and so I just keep things around just in case okay now let's go look at my baby over here so right here is my Shelford channel strip this channel strip is a beast it sounds so beautiful it sounds great it's warm I can't get into the, the details of it but let me tell you this is a great preamp I love it I never heard vocal sound as great since I've gotten this preamp here is your preamp section uh, it has you know, you know how much mic gain you want it has a trim to actually turn that up some more it has a high pass phantom power you can see it all right here then it has a beautiful EQ compression and then one thing I do love about this is the silk, the red and blue silk. Adds just the right touch to it, make your vocals sound amazing. You have to try both to see which sounds best, but just a little tab of this and your vocals are screaming, they're beautiful. Okay, so let's move over to my mixing and mastering section. All right, so right now we're looking at what you're looking at is my mixing and master chain, and this is awesome, guys. And I'm excited about this because guess what? The results are great. They're outstanding. I've never heard my the clarity of my music in a, such a way ever until I got this gear here. I could hear how things were loud or too loud or not balanced or I mean it really brought out the clarity and depth of my music so let's get into it let's talk about this and this is what I'm really excited about so how this is all set up in my system is I have the converter 8 which is the bottom piece here the converter 8 is uh, has eight channels basically she's hooked up USB and she's a slave 
to the AD Plus, which is here, okay? And she's pretty simple. It's a digital to analog converter. And she is a beautiful piece. And she makes the low end so clear and it makes it thump. And it's a great outstanding piece. And if you wanna hear more about that piece, and I'll probably do a video later on on it, then I will get more in depth on it. Then I have the D-Box Plus, so my computer hits the Convert 8 first, and then it hits the D-Box Plus, which is also has a digital analog converter in it, but it's not as great as this one. So that's why I needed the Convert 8. So the D-Box Plus acts as my mixer. So all my outputs as far as three speaker outputs as, let me just turn this over here. So we can go right to it. So we got three. We got three speaker outputs. One, two, and three. And that's the sub. All right, now we got a mono button. So we can make it mono. And if I come back this way, we have the headphones. So it's headphone control room and the phones. And there's two more jacks on the back. And the volume control. Then we have the talk back. So we can talk to the artist as they're in the booth and they can talk back through the mic. Then we have the various selections for the phones, whether it be analog, some uh, Bluetooth audio, which you can play a Bluetooth device through this and hear it through your speakers. And then you also have USB and your digital um, outputs and inputs. Okay, so, and then over here, you have the signal uh, that are present, one through eight, and you have also your trim knob, so basically you can turn up the amount of volume that is coming from the system. And this, this is controlled, if we step back a little bit, this is controlled through my iPad here. I can turn it up and down, change the different ins and outs from here, mono, and so forth. Okay, different sources. So it's great, I don't have to ever touch it. I just do it from over here. And so, once it leaves my D-Box, let's go back, come up, okay. Then it hits my bus compressor. So this is a nice compressor uh, for warm audio. Um, one thing I really like about it is the transformer. The transformer just adds some depth to your mix, um, and it just sounds great. You just have to try it out and see what sounds best to you, but I normally leave the transformer on. Then I hit, and I know these ain't in any order. I didn't hit the backs. I didn't hit the backs EQ. And this, this EQ is phenomenal. I first heard it at Junior Lee, Junior Lee's spot, that's Faith Junkie, at his spot, and I had to have one. I had to have this EQ. Cause this EQ, what it did, just by turning it on, it added three dimensional sound to your audio. It added so much depth and clarity in it. And once you started tweaking it, the bottom end, the top end, and so forth, it just sounds amazing. And so, yes, this, this is the EQ, boy. I'm telling you, this EQ, I had to have it. And so once I leave the EQ, then I go up to the Convert AD Plus. And what that means is analog to digital. So this then converts my signal back to digital and sends it back to the computer. And this is also my master for every other device that's uh, clocked to this device. Cause I'm using the clock on this device as my master. Um, it has a digital level so you can see your signals and so forth. It has peak on it where you can monitor that and also clip guard. So you can push this thing pretty hard and that clip guard will keep things from clipping. And then once it goes in the computer, then it has to come back out again. And that's where my converter two comes in. The converter two is similar to the converter eight, pretty much the same uh, conversion, and but a lot better than the D-Box Plus because I could have used the D-Box Plus as my last step in my chain. But the converter two is a much better converter in it and I wanted the best sound I could possibly get. And let me go back just one step. This 80 plus, and I never uh, do anything without turning on 
this transformer. I can't live without it. It does some amazing, amazing, amazing stuff to your audio. And I, I mean, I can deep dive in it, but I won't do that right now. But that is, I mean, whoo, secret weapon. All right. So, yes. So there's my new pieces, guys. Awesome. Dangerous. Awesome. So this is the uh, Motu 1248. This outstanding piece, one of the best interfaces I've ever used. Very versatile, take on any application that you're looking to take on, whether it be live or in the studio. Just an outstanding piece. Currently, I'm not using it while I'm mixing right now, but if I want to run things back into the computer, I use this or I use the board and run it through this back to the computer uh, when using external uh, sounds or something like that. Let's talk about uh, monitoring real quick. So I got a lot of speakers in the studio, guys. Just take a look, just take a look. All the speakers I have in the studio. You'd be like, why you got so many speakers? Because various speakers sound different, okay? And you can compare. I even got the little uh, desktops down here. And I, oh, I turn those on occasionally. And then if you take a look back here, I got more speakers, okay? To noise, Natty Audio. I got my PVs. These are the uh, loudspeakers with the uh, 18 inch subs down at the bottom. I rarely turn those on because those things shake the house. I try to use those for live sound, uh, but in the studio, I turn them on just to see how it sound and just to check my mix. And then if you go back, I do have some other speakers on the floor, loudspeakers, and these are I use to do my my long distance uh, listening. These are the Behringer's, as 15 inch subs, and it woofers in them, um, and 12 inch horns. It's on both sides, and so I'll use these when I want to do long distance listening. Okay, so what do we have? We got the world-renowned NS10 studio speakers by Yamaha. These things sound awesome. Beautiful. They're beautiful, 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 beautiful. Industry standard here. I run those with a, another uh, amp that's down in the rack, uh, but they're awesome. And then we have Personas, the Aries, E8, XTs. Beautiful low end, nice high end these speakers here they have a sweet spot so if you're not in the sweet spot you'll know about it so they got a sweet spot that you just stay in the sweet spot and you do your mixing if near field mixing it's, it's just like the ns10s and so forth and then we have the bx 5s by m audio another sound another speaker just to check things out make sure things are sounding like they should be so this is kind of how i do all my tests um, and then I have the regular M Audio desktop speakers down here. Same thing, be able to hear what it sounds like. And I, I normally like to use the NS10s just to ver verify that my bass is cutting through because they don't have a whole lot of lows, but you can listen to see whether or not is the bass cutting the right way uh, as far as um, so you can hear them on laptop speakers and on earbuds and stuff like that you want that bass to cut through and so I, I use that to kind of add the saturation to the bass line and this here is the Personas T10 subwoofer I use it to get my low end right when mixing my tracks the centerpiece of my lab is the MX9000 by Behringer and basically I use this just to plug up devices you know like uh, over here for my production side and I haven't really talked about it I had this piece, one of my first pieces I ever had, and this is the Boss DR5. Beautiful piece, it sounds great. Okay, so I have other gear in the studio that um, I'm not, maybe not using at the time. Just like over here, if you look, I got a CD uh, recorder. Uh, we got some compressors in the studio. Like down here, I got some uh, reverb modules and things like that samplers and things like that 
I may use them at some point, but at this point I'm not using those things unless I have a requirement to use them. But I just keep things around just in case. And I do have other gear in the studio that's not on display, that's in kind of in storage. And so program I use, if you can see, look up here, I use Pro Tools as my, my doll. And I use Reasons as my production because Reasons, I just like um, how you have to attach things to it as far as uh, plugging up all the devices and things like that, just like if I was doing it uh, hands-on, I love it. Over here, I got my controller keyboard. Got a little mess on it, but this here is my M-Audio. It's my M-Audio controller the keyboard here. And then I have my SY35. I've had this thing for a long time, just never got rid of it. I, again, some of the sounds in it, I might take some of the sounds out of it and use them in the project. It still sounds great. If you look around the room, you see my panels. I got acoustic panels up. I don't have all the walls uh, like, like jammed with uh, acoustic panels, just where it need, need be to be with the acoustic panels, the treatment, just to control the sound, control the bass. So you'll see around the room, acoustic panel treatment in the windows and things like that. Acoustic panel treatment on the back, back wall, right here in the center. And then if you take a look up, you also have acoustic treatment up here at the top. So my whole ceiling, is acoustic treatment okay and basically the sound in here is pretty dead so it works that's what i'm talking about all right i think that covers everything that i want to talk about okay so this concludes my studio tour if you got any questions any comments please leave them below if you want me to go in depth about any of these pieces that you saw please leave me a comment below don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Don T, Don T Records Music Group. Thank you for joining me today. Peace.